What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to go over uh, something that Big Dog, big shout out to Big Dog, AKA Trucking Man for coming up with this conversation and just something that we got going in the Discord. It is all about the world tier one to world tier two uh, difficulties that you would choose to start the campaign at the start of June 6th or June 1st if you got the early access. It's playing the story mode to get to end game on world tier two versus world tier one difficulty. There was another video made by Don the Crown. Big shout out to him. I'll leave a link down to his channel in the description below, guys. I think this is a very important topic among the Diablo 4 community is whether to play on World Tier 1 or World Tier 2 going through the story, or at least if you're trying to blast until endgame. So I'm going to go over some of my um, tips and tricks and kind of how my assessment of this whole conversation goes and maybe this will help you out so let me know down in the comments what do you guys think about all this stuff the main thing is that you want to get to end game right the entire thing is to get to world tier three difficulty okay because you're going to get better loot drops especially more like legendaries and you want to get there to be able to get to torment which is world tier four um difficulty and mainly in world tier three to really like start doing your nightmare dungeons and really pushing for end game as well as the pvp area uh, you know the tree of whispers all this stuff right you want to get to the end game content um so it's all about getting to level 50 as fast as possible now what this is going to do is this is going to unlock your paragon levels at you know level 50 you start earning paragon levels which is huge then you start to get access to the end game mechanics and then world tier 3 is definitely the goal so but the big question is is how do we get to world tier 3 efficiently or just how to get there in general okay so the main way to do this is to finish the campaign you have to finish the story first uh and then once you finish the story you're gonna uh, unlock the capstone dungeon which we all know from Riker. shout out to Riker, is that a very it's a very very hard dungeon and he definitely um underestimated it so make sure you are prepped for that but then once you defeat the capstone dungeon then you unlock the world tier boss and then once you defeat the world tier boss you have to do this on world world tier two difficulty and then it's going to unlock world tier three difficulty so the entire reason to get to the end game is to blast through the story okay so uh, a, a quick note here too is it does not matter what world tier you play the story on so there's no difference there. You have to be on world tier two to unlock world tier three when you defeat the world tier boss. So let's take a look up. I'm gonna put a graphic up on the screen, guys. So let's look at the world tier dif differences as far as rewards. Just between one and two, this does not include three and four. So the only thing that's different is that enemies become more challenging. They give you 20% more EXP, and then the monsters drop 15% more gold. So this is this is really cool. If you want a more challenging and harder experience and more rewarding experience, then on the surface, this definitely looks like the way to go, right? But because it says monster experience, there is no experience that you gain from turning in side quests, bonus story quests, the main quests, doing strongholds, doing world events. There's no additional EXP unless you are killing mobs. So in the end, you're not necessarily gaining more EXP. There's a lot of math out there. I'll leave that to Don to, to break up the math. But essentially, if you are slowed down at all by doing World Tier 2, then effectively you're not really gaining that 1.2 experience. You're actually losing EXP when you're just trying to get through the game. Now, um, so the question is, is why do it on World Tier 2, right? Now, I think for most people, uh, like myself, who's a content creator, like doing it for content is very, very good because it's going to be more satisfying to fight world bosses. It's going to be more satisfying to defeat, you know, normal bosses and things like that to be able to see like, hey, I'm not just one shotting or killing this supposedly really hard boss in, you know, 10 seconds because I have this crazy build, you know, it makes it a little more challenging. So that's one perspective that you can do it if you really like the, the harder and more grindier experience, uh, then definitely do world tier two. To me, even in the first open beta, the early access open beta, and then now Server Slam, I've played all of it on World Tier 2, and it felt fine. And this is also in solos as well as groups. Um, and then the world, then the, the Ashava World Tier boss was really fine in the first beta at 25, but you had all these legendaries. In the second one, as you guys can see on the screen, I just died. So Ashava was a lot harder at level 20 with less legendaries or less stronger gear. And that was on World Tier 2 difficulty. So... I don't think if you want a harder challenge, then World Tier 2 is definitely it. But now, I don't want to take away from anybody's experience because I know you guys are going to light it up in the comments. But if you want 
you know, play however you want, play it your way. Obviously, that's what Blizzard and everybody wants you to do in Diablo, but if you are a grinder like me, and you want to blast to the end game, get to the end game systems, rock your Paragon board, get to level 100, then it's all about being the most efficient with your time as you can be on the game. So if, even if it takes me 0.1 second longer to kill mobs, over time that's gonna add up and I'm gonna lose time to progress through the game to get to the end game. So to me, it's, I'm, I really wanna test it and just see because on World Tier 2, it took me roughly two hours or so to get to 20. And I know some people record that. There was a guy who did it, did it with a sorcerer in an hour, an hour and 10 minutes, which is crazy to 20. So, uh, and then a lot of people as well in my Discord who are struggling against the Ashava fight switched it to World Tier 1 and she was significantly easier. So it's, you know, it, it's kind of like back and forth now. But to me personally, I want to get to the end game. I want to get to the end game as fast as possible. I want to be able to play these builds. I want to be able to use the Paragon board and just do everything just really, really efficient in Diablo. And we've talked about this a lot in Diablo 3 as far as our greater rift mechanics and all these things that we do. So to me, the strategy, if you want to do this, is to play on World Tier 1, right? You create your character, you're going to play on World Tier 1. You're going to blast through the main story, okay? You're not going to do anything else. You're going to blast through the main story, complete the main story, unlock the Capstone Dungeon, switch it to World Tier 2, defeat the Capstone Dungeon, unlock the World Tier Boss, defeat the World Tier Boss on World Tier 2 difficulty, and then as soon as you do that, you immediately switch it to World Tier 3 difficulty and start blasting all the end game systems. Another big reason to do it on World Tier 1 is because of PvP. If you're one of the first teams or players to get to the end game and do the PvP section, you're gonna be able to collect all those resources to get the gear, because you can target farm that gear. And if you're one of the first teams to do it, it's not gonna take you very long. So nobody's gonna be really PvPing, so you're gonna be able to gather these resources for free, right? So then you got Nightmare Dungeons and you're gonna be able to do your Paragon boards and all these things. So to me, I think on paper at least, it would benefit you to complete the story going through World Tier 1. But if you want to grind your experience, then you still do World Tier 2. I think I'm still going to do World Tier 2 because I'm grouping with my community here on, on the channel and in the live stream. So we're just going to blast anyway. But if you're a solo player and you're not really having anybody to play with, then join my Discord link down in the description and we group up. Our whole community does everything together. But World Tier 2 is still what, probably what I'm going to play. But this is a very interesting topic. So I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below like the video if you guys did enjoy it and hit that subscribe button guys for everybody who's new here to the channel and community i'm almost at 10,000 subs i want to get there before the release of diablo 4 so help me out and of course as always guys stay gaming i'll catch you in the next one peace